I, in this video, I plan to share with you the specific things that I did to film my lesson for EdTPA, what technology I used, um, tips for you if you don't have that kind of technology, um, and all of those details. So if that's something that you are interested in, stay tuned. I'm Shelby with EdTPA The Easy Way, and today I'm going to be talking about my technical tips for filming your video for EdTPA. Um, the specific apps, technologies, ways that I filmed, the things that I did um, to make sure that your video is clear, that your students and yourself can be heard, and that you don't end up filming a video and then having to refilm it because the video did not work. Um, I make these kind of videos every week and um, post them here. So if that's something you're interested in, um, please make sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up if you like it, um, and leave me a comment down below with any questions or with any video types that you would like to see. So without further ado, um, let's get started. So the first thing I would say, if you can get this product, I guess you would call it a product, if your school has it, this would be my top recommendation. Um, my school just happened to have this in our library. Uh, we're a Title I school, so I do know that means we have more funds technically than some other schools, so um, that can be a plus at times. Um, but my library had what's called a swivel, S-W-I-V-L, um, and I'm gonna link the product down below you can find it on amazon not that i'm saying to go buy it but just so you can see what it is if you're not sure ask your library though um if they have that that you could rent or check out um if so that is the way to go what it is um it's a little robotic base that sits on a tripod and you put an ipad in it or another tablet i guess um, but i use an ipad and the swivel base it's like a little um cylinder um sits and screws into the top of the tripod and then connects to the ipad um, for audio but then connects to this thing you wear around your neck via bluetooth and the piece around your neck not only is a tracker for the base of the the, the swivel hence the swivel um so when you move throughout your classroom it slowly pans and follows you so you don't have to worry about having someone moving the camera but the piece is also a microphone so wherever you go or wherever you choose to leave the piece it's a microphone and it's going directly to your um footage and so you don't have to worry about you or your students not being heard um this was the greatest thing um now i will say I did a few practice runs. Um, the first few times I used it, I definitely had to get used to how it was set up and what the angle needed to be. Um, and I had a couple of issues with it the first times, first few times I filmed, but once I figured it out and found that there is an app, a swivel app that goes with it that you download, man, made life a million times easier. It uploaded, you could log into Swivel online on a computer, it uploaded straight there, so you didn't have to figure out how you were gonna upload this giant file off your iPad. Um, you could edit it on there as far as like making your cuts. You know, for a TPA, you can't edit your video. They don't wanna see like pans in and out or background music. If you do that, it's actually considered unscorable. Um, but if you needed to take your pieces that you were going to use, you could do that. So. If it's possible for you to get the swivel, oh my goodness, do it. It was the greatest thing ever. Um, if I can find little clips from, that, from what I filmed where you can see me kind of setting it up, I will try and insert them here. If not, just know that I couldn't find them. And for a TPA purposes, I am not going to be posting my own video. You sign a thing when you submit saying, I will not post this to YouTube and I'm not gonna post it to YouTube. But if I can find clips of me like setting it up, um, I will insert that here. Test, 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 test. Test. Testing, moving this direction. Sure, I have seen here. So, 
My second tip would be if your library does not have a swivel, which totally fine if they don't, um, it's pretty easy to record on an iPad. My school is um, a one-to-one -one school. All of the students have iPads and all the teachers have iPads. And the way that you can use iMovie on an iPad now makes doing the trimming and the cutting really easy for filming and it's very portable. Um, so if you can get a little tripod thing for an iPad and use and set that up, um, it's pretty easy. But here's a tip for filming on the iPad. Go into the settings of your video record settings. It's probably gonna be set, especially on the newer ones, on like your 1080p um, like high def recording. One, your file size that you upload can't be that large, nor do they need it to be. And two, if you film an entire 50 minute class, which you will just set it up and film it in HD, you are never going to be able to find a platform to be able to email yourself or upload that large of a file off your iPad and onto the computer to be able to edit it. Did that. <laughs> that was frustrating. So before you record, go into your iPad settings and change it down to one of the lower ones. Um, really, the file size has to be so small. It does not need to be HD, and they say that in the EdTPA format anyway, they're not looking for an HD file. So if you use your iPad, change the video recording settings before you record to save yourself a lot of hassle. Um, now, with that being said, my third tip is wherever you record, even if you're not using an iPad, if you're using your laptop, the front-facing camera, which I know people use and it works, um, my tip would be you need to find a way to make sure that you and your students can be heard. And so if the activity that you set up, if it's at all possible that you are working with either a small group or small groups rotate by where your camera, your iPad, your computer, whatever is set up so that you're at least guaranteed to have some footage where your camera for sure can hear and see those students and yourself, that's gonna save you a lot of hassle. I would not recommend just setting it in the back corner and and like going at class like normal, one that part of the types of, I did another video, types of lessons they're looking for, they're not looking for you to just stand at the front of the class and teach a lesson. Um, I will link that video in the card here if you're interested or haven't seen it yet. But if you can set it up so that groups are rotating by and stay for you know an extended period of time, at least five minutes or something, in front of the camera, then you're gonna be guaranteed that you can hear them. Um, if you happen to be panned out and you're calling on students, um, either make sure you remind your students that they need to raise their voice or if they say something and it's kind of soft, maybe repeat it back to the class just so that you can um, hear it on the video. Because the first time I filmed, the audio cut in and out the whole time and I wasn't able to use it. Um, and that was just a nightmare. Which leads me to my fourth tip, which is if at all possible, find a way to be miked. Um, again, check with your, your library. So many schools have AV clubs or departments or kids that put on the morning shows or whatever, and somebody there has got the, the technology most likely that they can let you check out or even that those kids who do this stuff all the time can come in and help you with, help you set up. Because if you're miked, um, like I said, with the swivel, I would wear the thing around my neck, but sometimes if I needed to go check in with some other kids, but I was wanting the focus to be on a small group of students who were working on a problem, I would leave the mic on that table, leave the camera facing them, and then you could see me in the background walking around and checking on the other kids, but you could still hear a continued conversation with this group of students. So if you're mic'd, one, they can always make sure to hear you. It helps pick up the sound around you. And if it's possible that if you're mic'd, that you're able to even leave that in a central location for a time. Um, if that works better, then do that. But the worst thing is to get done, look back at your video, and then realize that you can't be heard or your students can't be heard. And in the EdTPA submission guidelines, it says if 
your students cannot be clearly seen or heard. Um, it can make your video unscorable if they can be seen but not heard. You could provide transcripts for the whole video, but no thank you. Do I want to spend my extra time typing word for word what everyone is saying? No. So, fourth tip, try and be miked if at all possible to save yourself that headache, okay? Maybe that was my third tip, whichever one. Next tip. I'll update it with this number here. Um, practice, like practice, 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 because you're gonna get the glitches out. Not only will you figure out your technology, your students will become more comfortable with having a camera in the room, um, right? You can ixnay the fact that they're probably gonna wanna dab in front of the camera and all that stuff. I teach middle school, so that totally happened the first time that I filmed. Um, just teach them to ignore it and really yourself to ignore it. Um, it will just make all of life easier if you practice beforehand, get used to your technology, upload it, see what it looks like, see what it sounds like, and see where you need to adjust, okay? And um, last tip, put a sign on the door, okay? The first time that I filmed, um, I had students who would come and like see me or ask me to like sign them a pass to come and eat lunch or whatever. Just open the door and be like, Miss Landrum. <sighs> and then I'm in the middle of filming. So put a sign on your door that says like recording in process. Do not enter unless like absolutely necessary. And if so, enter quietly. Um, it'll just save yourself the hassle. Now I did have my um, office like intercom beep in one time during my Thing. I just treated it like normal and kept moving. I was actually able to reference that in my instruction commentary and say how, you know, I was able to continue with the flow of class, that my students understood procedure to know that when they, when the office beeps in, they're silent and then we picked up and continued and that was fine. But if you can cut down on the number of people coming in and out of your door while you're filming, you'll save yourself a lot of hassle. So, those are my technical tips for filming. Like I said, I will link the swivel below um, if you're interested in seeing what it's like. Check with your library. Pray that they have it. That would be awesome if they had it. If not, uh, work with them. And I'm also, I can do a separate video on like formatting it, uploading it, how to get the right file size, but that's kind of like a whole other thing in itself. I could hopefully like um, do a screen share of my computer and show you that. So if you're interested in that, let me know. But as far as how I filmed, those are my tips. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Post these videos every week on all things EdTPA. Um, hope to see you guys soon and happy EdTPA.